Hello, this is Bob Gray Sr. Welcome to Ministry Moments, three o'clock every Friday, Central Time. You can go to Ministry Moments YouTube and type in Bob Gray Sr. and then you can subscribe. Uh, SolveChurchProblems.com. I would suggest you go there. A lot of extra materials there and subscribe. Uh, uh, podcast, Ministry Moments Podcast. Find it on your favorite podcast supplier and then punch subscribe. Well, we're glad you're here. Ministry Moments is very practical. It's not long, but uh, 0.1, 0.2, 0.3. And, uh, but you, you, you'll learn, it, you know, <laughs> after 50 years of ministry, it seemed like this old man should have learned something to pass along to you. I never liked that phrase, old man. I, I used to say to the guys about Brother High, I said, oh, it irritated the fire out of me. Uh, didn't like it, didn't like it, didn't like it now. So I don't know why I used it. Let me talk to you about longevity. We've got to, to hurry. Longevity, longevity. Uh, the great men of the past there were men who, were in it for the long haul, not the short haul. They were in it because it was their life. And because it was their life, <clears throat> same thing with me. I, I'm uh, at the, doing this broadcast, I'm 76, and uh, 57 years of marriage, Miss Gray, 50 years of ministry, seemed like we had learned something. Well, I think at the time, I don't know how much longer I got. I've lived two years longer than Brother Hiles did, and which astounds me. I was preaching for Brother Walker in Lexington, and uh, before he introduced me on a Sunday night or a Tuesday night, he said, uh, Brother Gray, how old are you? And I stopped and I said, 76. That was the first time in my old age that it dawned on me how old I was. I don't feel it. I, I, I keep moving, but it, it, it got me that night. And I've been thinking ever since, two years longer, boy, I've got to get with it and get to uh, use as much as I can. I probably got three years. Uh, I say I'll be 80. My daddy did. Mama lived to be 98. You don't want that to happen, do you? But uh, so anyway, let me talk to you about longevity, longevity. Uh, 50 years in the ministry. I've seen a lot. <clears throat> I've known a lot of great men, preach for them. They preach for me. We preach together. And uh, in some ways, I think I'm the last of the week as, uh, as far as uh, being a part of the 22 years I preached for Brother Hiles, not every week, but the last 11 years, almost every week, and many foreign countries. Great man, Tom Malone, great man. Lee Robinson, oh man, powerful, powerful. Lester Roloff, uh, Curtis Hudson, all great men of the past. So, okay, here we go, longevity. Number one, time is an event. Get that stuck in your head. It's not the, it's not the Sunday school hour, it's a Sunday school event. It's not the preaching hour, it's a preaching event. You've got to get a hold of that and understand time is an event. So you're not wasting time, you're wasting events in your life. Statement number two, the more events, the more experience. The more things you have to run through and take care of and come on top of it, then you're going to, you're going to, that's why I said the judgment falls seven times, rise again. Why? He learned. He, he's not going to fall that pit the second time. My daddy used to say, son, a man that will fall in the same pit twice is an ignorant man. And uh, <laughs> he was right. So we learn when we fall, we learn, get back up. I'll tell you one thing, I'll never do that one again. But you do something else, dumb. And then you fall, then you get back up again. But a just man gets back up. He bounces back up. He doesn't stay down. He keeps moving. Now, I, I said time is an event. Event. You got that? It's Sunday morning event. It's Sunday night event, not Sunday morning hour or Sunday night hour. Number two, the more events, the more experience. So these men that were great in the past had more experience than the young pups that kept bouncing from church to church to church. They never did learn. And uh, they, just, they just didn't learn. Number three. The less you do, the less experience you will have. I love pastor school because of Brother Hiles, but because my mind was working and I saw things and I wrote things down. And uh, I remember I made a terrible mistake when I was in Bourbonnet, Illinois, the first year. I took a bunch of men to pastor school and I was just there. I had 40 driving, 50 on the bus, running 90. Woo! We were excited. I was excited. That was my first church. And so, uh, we went there and all the men sitting around me and they, they talked about this ministry, this ministry, this ministry, this ministry. And my men were writing it all down and we got in a van to come back and they said, how come we don't do? And why don't we do? And why don't we do? Oh, I said, I'll never, I didn't take leave after that to pastor school. No, 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 no. We weren't ready for it. We weren't prepared for it. I wasn't ready for it. But uh, so who would you take? I took the staff. That way we could brainstorm. And they knew 
that we had to be patient. They knew that we if were not ready for this. We're not, we will be one day. But so that, that was a big, big uh, thing for me. Uh, long, longevity. Number one, time is an event. The more events, the more experience you have. Patiently do more. Patiently do more. And Brother Howe said to me when they don't jerk that steering wheel, now you just slowly turn that steering wheel. Number three, the less you do, the less experience you will have. So don't be afraid to stick your neck out and step out. You can't do the great work that these men did after 40 years, but good night, you can do something. You could add a bus route and add another bus route add a, and, and go to the nursing home, go to the jail ministry, go soul winning, start some more soul winning times. Number four, two works at play. Well, this is very, very, very important for you to get. There are, in long, and talk about longevity now. There are two works at, at, at play here. Number one, whatever, what the members are doing to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a work there. Yeah. One guy said, my, my work's done here. I, I think you need to find me another place to go. Yeah. Your work may be done, but their work on you may not be done. That's where experience comes from. All right. Two works at play. When you're a pastor, just get this stuck in your head. Number one, what they're doing to you. <laughs> every time they go haywire, every time you you have counseling, every time you do, they put their lives back together and all that kind of stuff. You're learning. You're learning. But where'd it come from? From them. Where do sermons come from? Needs. I counsel. I I I, I help this family with this and this and this. And then when I get five of the same thing, I said, well, you know, God help me. God in my my private Bible really help me. Give me something that I can use to help these dear people. And that's where great sermons come from. Books, they say, are written with the blood's author, the author's blood, I should say. Now, I think that's true about pastoring. Uh, the blood of the pastor is where these sermons come from, these needs come from. All right, got to hurry, got to hurry. Longevity, long time in the ministry. There is a, a, an event. Time is an event. The more events, the more experience. The less you do, the less experience you will have. So stick your neck out. Now, you can't do what these great men did after 40 years and 50 years, but you can do a little bit more. All right, two works at play. What they are doing on you, and they're working on you, but they're working on your patience and your time and your love. And, and, and then number two, what, what you're doing on the, to them. So two works at play. When you're pastoring and pastoring, there's a work they're doing on you and the work you're doing on them. So don't say, I've done all, I've done all I can do. Time for me to move on. No, maybe they're not done with you yet. I said, number one, time is an event. Number two, the, the more events, the more experience. Number three, the less you do, the less experience you will have. Number four, two works at play. What they're doing on you and what you're doing on them. You're not ready to leave yet. Number five, the great man of men of the past stayed when others left. Check them out. Jack Howe stayed when somebody left for the same problem that he had. Lee Robertson stayed when everybody left. He stayed through the problem. He stayed through it. He, to go through it was better than to go around it or go over it. They got to go through it, all right? Let's roll off. Oh, my goodness. What a great man of God he was. But he plowed right through there, all right? Tom Malone, same thing. Tom Malone, he told me one time, he said, I, I was driving by Emmanuel, the church. <laughs> he said, all kinds of cars there. Sir. And I thought, my goodness, what's going on? <laughs> I didn't schedule anything. He gets out of the car, walks in. They're all down around, all the men are down around the altar. So he slips down in this wonderful they're praying, God bless these men. They're praying for Emmanuel for tomorrow. Oh, this, and I didn't even call the meeting. This is wonderful. So he gets down, everybody's praying, praying. The guy next to him prayed, oh God, kill Tom Malone. Take him out of the way. He's hindering us. Take him out of the way. <laughs> I said, what did you do? He said, I didn't pray that prayer. <laughs> he, he prayed and uh, God bless him. He, he went to hell and back, but he, he, he stayed. All right, the great men of the past, had, had number six slow growth one and a half a sunday that's all one and a half a sunday uh you know you don't know anybody they join on sunday you put them in the sunday school class they may be a child molester <laughs> you have no idea that's why a year our our term was a year you come sit for a year and then we'll know what you're made of after a year we'll know if you show up for so on thursday night or whatever we'll, we'll, we'll know if you come to sunday school we'll, we'll know if you're tithing or not and I want to make sure that you're the example that you ought to be before I put you in front of the, of the, part members ought to be soul winners and separated from the world. They should be, they should be. 
uh, Sunday school teachers, uh, bus captains, and so on. All right, so number one, time is an event. I'm talking about longevity now. Time is an event. The more events, the more experience. The less you do, the less experience you'll have. Number four, two works at play, what you're doing on the members and what they're doing on you. Number five, the great men of the past stayed at that point when others left. They stayed, they fought it, went through it, and came out victorious on the other side. Number six, the great men of the past had slow growth. Not, not, but you, you young guys, God bless you, you've got to have a worship team look alike. Yeah, yeah, they're all up there. They're look alike. They know, you know, people know what that's reminded them of. It's subliminal. As one, one granddaughter told me. Uh, now, so the truth of the matter is, and those songs, where'd you get those songs? It won't take much. Google, find out where to add good grief, charismatic, uh, lose your salvation, speak in tongues. Asta Lashanha, Kawasaki, Yuzuki, Yamaha. If you want to speak in tongues, memorize the motorcycles and stay in real fast. <laughs> uh, longevity. There is, time is an event. The more events, the more experience. The less you do, the less experience you'll have. Number two works at play. What you're doing on them, what they're doing on you. Five, the great men of the past stayed when others left. And number six, the great men of the past had slow growth. Now, don't miss this last point. That I'm going to quit, okay? Number seven, the great men of the past listened to the great men of the past. I say it again. The great men of the past listened to the great men of the past. We're not doing that now. You take some guy in California, he's got green lights, blue lights, purple lights. They do that nightclubs. Yeah, ask your deacons, they know. Uh, you, don't, you don't need a reference. You don't need to connect the dots and find yourself in a uh, Rick Warren lookalike. Uh, it, it, I'm, you, you're asking for trouble. Uh, I know one pastor who has a, a big conference every year, but he took his whole staff and went down to the Cathedral of Timothy. What do they call it? Cathedral. I forgot now what the name of the thing was. Glass Cathedral. And they drove down and took the staff and took everybody and learned from that man. He wasn't even a Baptist. Not only independent about it. I don't care if you had a big church. I don't care. And some of these auditoriums you're building don't look like churches. They look like charismatic buildings and so on. You, you pattern yourself after the wrong people. And it's the little things that are going to get you. You're, you're not a fool with your people. And guess what's going to happen? Some people are going to come and infiltrate and join, and the whole thing will be gone the next generation. The whole thing will be gone. And so, hey, good news. Uh, I, I'm talking about longevity. I hope you took notes. Hope you wrote it down. And ministry moments, subscribe. That way you'll get this every week. God bless you. Have a great Saturday. Win a lot of souls. Keep people out of hell. And we'll see you next week.